All right, welcome to Clarinet Ninja. My name's Jay. I'm here to talk about something that we've all heard about, we've all thought about, and is probably the most important part about playing the clarinet. Let me put it as a question. What is support? We've all been told lots of things, and most of them are probably true, or at least well-intended. Over the course of the past couple days, I've given a number of lessons that have had a theme to them. And sometimes that happens when you're a teacher, you get something in your head and that's what you see everywhere. But I do think that this line of thought is useful for everybody, whether you're just getting started or whether you've played successfully for years. I believe myself to have played successfully for years and I still think about this and I want to share these ideas with you. What is support? I can't actually define it. I can't, I can't give a simple statement about what support is. I know a lot of times there are things that people say about what support is and how to do it. Uh, I want to examine some ideas that I have that some people think are a little crazy, but I actually think that they're pretty, pretty on the money or at the very least interesting. So stick with me. We'll check it out. Keep in mind, the subscribe button, you can hit it anytime if you feel like this has been interesting or entertaining. Uh, and also the like button that's open for this whole video. If at any point you're comfortable deciding that you like it, hit it. I'd love it. If you did, that would really help get my message to the rest of the world. Support is clearly related to breathing and how we use our air when we play the clarinet. That's for sure. Now let's first go into how do we take a breath in? That's an important question because we have to get this air inside of us before we can play. Here's what I know. Even if you didn't breathe in to play the clarinet, you still have air. You know how to breathe. Does it take something different to get the proper air inside you and enough of it to play the clarinet? Yes. We do have to do something a little bit different than we might normally do if we're just sitting around making YouTube videos or watching TV or making dinner or driving a car or whatever it is that we do. Here's how I like to imagine our inhaling. There's a couple different ways to yawn. I don't want to show you the rude way, because I don't want to be rude to you, but it involves opening your mouth, big yawn. And you breathe a giant breath of air in through your mouth. To me, the feeling of getting a good breath on the clarinet feels like this. My example is always church. Whatever church you go to, or if you don't go to church, imagine you did go to church. Whomever the leader of the service is at some point will take some time to say some special words with some special meaning. And in it's, it's in those moments you don't want to yawn with your mouth open. So we yawn with our mouth closed. It looks like this. <sighs> and you can even hear in my voice, there's an openness to that. The breath has gone in through my nose. It's a very relaxed breath. It's a very open breath. It's that feeling that we want to have when we breathe in, when we play the clarinet. Here's the trouble. We can't inhale through our nose when we play the clarinet. It must be that we inhale through our mouth simply because we're gonna need a lot of air. Let's take a second and figure out why we need a lot of air. There's a lot of things said about the clarinet in an effort to get kids to play it properly. One of those things is fill the clarinet up with air. I've got some good news. For no extra cost, every manufacturer of every clarinet includes air. It's in there already. And I don't mean this facetiously. It's there. And that's an important thing to know. It's a, it's a very strange thing, isn't it? That like, if I handed my clarinet to a beginner, they would not sound like me. If I hand my clarinet to pick your favorite clarinet player, I happen to know Ricardo very well. If I hand Ricardo Morales my clarinet, He's going to sound like him. He's not going to sound like me. This is not what actually makes things sound different. It's our voicing. It's our read. It's, well, but yeah, you know, Ricardo would sound different on this read. A beginner would sound different on this read. We would all sound different. So it's not even that, right? It's, it's our voicing. It's us is what I'm trying to say. It is you. It is me. It is whomever else that is making it sound different. And one of the ways in which it's going to sound different is because of how we breathe and how we support. Whatever that is, we might get to that by the end. I might be able to figure it out as I talk this through. So we want to take that air in as if we are yawning. 
you'll notice that it fills up your lungs. Of course, it fills up your lungs because that's the only part of your body that can store air. A lot of times, band teachers, even me as a band teacher, will say, breathe all the way down here and they'll point to your belly button. But those are intestines and a stomach and they can't house any air. It might be a nice idea to think of filling up down low. I think that's, I know it's a good idea. It's going to help you breathe. It's going to help you get enough air. But it's not actually happening. Just be aware. It's a trick. <laughs> it's a trick with good intentions. It's a trick that might help your clarinet playing, but a trick nonetheless. So we want to fill our lungs all the way up because we all start out with the same amount of air in our instrument. The amount of air inside of us is also very important. I have heard some people say, and it was really interesting to me, we should only take in the amount of air that we need to play a particular phrase. Actually, someone I really respect and admire as a player, I won't tell you who, because I'm going to disagree with him, said that in a master class that I was watching, one of my students was playing at. Oh, that's interesting. But I don't agree. <laughs> Which is one of the fun things about playing the clarinet. And you might be sitting there thinking you don't agree with me. And that's okay, too. Uh, I can only tell you what I think and how this works for me. Uh, if you've got other ideas and they work for you, use them. Uh, so in any case, what I'm saying is we've got the air in here. We've got the air in here. And those that's how much air we are playing with. Here's the way I think of it. We all start out, let's say we, we're, we're thinking of 10 is full, zero is empty. Our clarinets are always at 10. The difference is some notes are long. If we play a low E or a B, the air is coming out here. So it's using one to 10. It's using the full tube of instrument. If we're playing C above the staff or second space A, our clarinet is very short. We're only using one of the 10 units of air in our instrument. Sure, there is some residual vibration in the standing air inside of our instrument, but that's not, you know, what's, I can't get too sciencey with that. Um, I can't get too sciencey with anything, but I, I can't even comprehend all that. So if we're, if all the air is coming out here, we're not using much air inside the clarinet. So really, the main difference on that note is how much air we have inside of us and how we are exhaling it. At this point, we can start to think about how we're blowing into the clarinet. But I want to mess things up a little further. I would like to say, I don't think any air goes into the clarinet when we play it. And uh, this contention has started more than one uh, disagreement with people and me. But here's, here's, what, I, here's what I want to show you. And, and this, this, so somebody can answer this for me if you know more than me about it. I can only go with what I see here. When we blow, when we're playing the clarinet, we talk about two ways to blow. We can blow hot air. Hot air will fog up your glasses. And then there's cold air, still fogged up. The pandemic has showed a lot of hot air in, my, in everyone's glasses, right? They get all fogged up all the time. But we can also blow cold air. That air is cold and it's fast. And that is, that is how we want to, to blow. We want to blow cold air. I don't think that there's much disagreement about that. We want to blow fast air. I think there are times we want to slow it down, but we're not really getting into that right now because I'm trying to show you one thing. Blow air out of your mouth. Hot air, cold air, I don't care. But you feel it on your hand. Air is coming out of your mouth. That's just sort of an undeniable experience. But now, play this and put your hand the same distance away. I don't feel anything. Uh, the time that I feel air is about the time the pitch changes on this. I've got to be about this close to the end of the mouthpiece before I feel anything. And it's not air rushing through this mouthpiece. It's air vibrating on the other side of it. One time I was teaching uh, a doctor how to play the clarinet. He was, he's actually, uh, he's passed away now, but he's one of was one of my closest friends through this experience and a really trusted person. And we are both big geeks for uh, lack of a better word. And he actually, I was telling him this theory. He said, well, let me look at my stethoscope. Let's see if there's any respiration happening. And he listened to my lungs while I was playing. And he said, no, there is no respiration going on when you're playing. I thought that was very interesting. Maybe we are not blowing air into the clarinet, which changes a lot of things. 
right? Does it? I don't know. But I don't think it changes how we play or what we think we're doing. We can think we're doing whatever we're doing, but there's not actually, I think, a lot of air transfer going on here. So what does that mean? We've got air here, air here, and this vibrating in between. And the air inside me is vibrating because it's connected to the air in this tube that is vibrating through this vibrating element here. So it makes a big difference if we have a lot of air because that actually gives us more clarinet. And that more clarinet, I've heard people say this, you should match the length of the tube with the amount of air inside you. I don't agree with that either. I think that I want my clarinet to have the most air that it can. This is a complicated math problem for me anyway. So if we've got 10 units of air here, we're playing a B all of our fingers down, or an E with all of our fingers down. We've got 10 units of air here, 20 units of air. But let's say we're playing our A, one unit of air. If I only have one unit of air here, I've only got two units of air. But if I have 10 units of air here, I've got 12 units of air. That's a huge difference. And one that I want, I want that more air vibrating in me. At least I think that's what I want. I don't know. I mean, these are just things that I think. I, I can't really actually prove much of any of this, but conceptually speaking, it's very, very interesting to me. Uh, so my take on it is it's even more important for me to have more air when I'm playing with less air inside this tube. That just is what makes sense to me. There's more air vibrating in this process of playing the clarinet. And at least for me, that's what I want. Here's another thing to keep in mind. When we have a lot of air, does not mean we have to use it. We don't have to blow all of it. And are we blowing any of it anywhere? Anyway, I, I don't know. It's confusing when you get into it. But so just because we have a lot of air doesn't mean we need to play loud. I think that every breath that we take should basically be the same in terms of the inhale. A nice, big, relaxed breath. And then we either play loud or we play soft. I don't think that there's there's a difference in how we begin. Uh, I th I know there are people that disagree with that, and that's what makes this fun. And the the last thing that we generally speaking talk about is pushing from our diaphragm, or somehow or another pushing from beneath our lungs. I know two things: if we push from where people point, which is our stomach or abdomen, those muscles don't push air. They just don't. Uh, and we can't really push from our diaphragm because that's an involuntary muscle. And quite honestly, there's two ways I know of to feel your diaphragm. One of them is super boring. And I'll show you right here. Take a nice big breath. Play a note until the very end. The very, very end until you are about to pass out. You'll feel a little <clears throat> underneath your, <laughs> right? Underneath your rib cage. That's your diaphragm. Can you find that and make it work on purpose? No, but there it is. The other way you can find your diaphragm, it's gross. And it doesn't happen all that often, you'd hope, which is when you throw up and you can feel a pain there sometimes. I can't prove that's my diaphragm, but I think it is. So in any case, my, my point is, those are the two times we can develop an awareness of our diaphragm, but there's no way that we can develop control over it. What we can do is find ways to exhale that trigger that support and ideas, which is why they say fill it up with virus, is why they say push them here, whatever. There's ways that we can trigger our diaphragm to work, but it's not like a direct, like, it doesn't work like a bicep or a tricep, or it works more like our heart, right? It's just going to beat and you can't sit here and will it to beat faster. 
you can exercise, you can do things, but just, you can't just say, hey, heartbeat, faster, slower. It doesn't work like that. The other thing I want to, I want to call out is when we start a note, we have all this oxygenated air inside of us. It works really well. It resonates very well. As we hold that note on the clarinet, it tends to go sharp and the sound changes. You notice that when I played that note. When I played past the usable part of my breath, which I definitely did, I would never hold a note to the point that it sounded like that note did at the end. I was only doing that to, to illustrate what you have to do to feel your diaphragm in action. Uh, but we tend to play better at the beginnings of our breaths. So that's also something to consider. And one of the challenges for me, the way I go about this is I have a big breath. If I don't use the whole thing, when I'm inhaling, I've actually got to get rid of that old breath and take the new one. And so there is breath that goes unused. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't cost any money. So there's no bill at the end of this. So I don't really care. But it can cause uh, some challenges in terms of getting rid of what would what I consider stale air. It's not a really pretty word for it, but you see what I'm saying. And so that air exchange happens in that way. So how can you practice this? When can you practice this? Well, let me say, every time you take a breath and play the clarinet, you should be thinking about this. No, that's not true. You should actively think about it when you practice certain things. For me, that's one of the reasons I practice scales as a warm up, is so I can practice having this good breath, like this. <sighs> Nice B major scale for you. That yeah, wasn't that nice. But uh, my point is that's when I'm thinking about the breath because that's my warm up. I'm getting ready to play. So I'm thinking about this breath and I'm trying to make it so that that breath that I am taking there, an intentional breath, becomes my habitual breath when I play the clarinet. That's the move, right? Our warm up gives us a chance to touch base with all these core fundamental things about playing the clarinet. That then when we play pieces, when we play in concerts, when we do these things, when we're under stress, that habit that we've created becomes our natural functioning way that we do it when the heat's on, uh, when it counts. So yeah, so when we're, when we're practicing articulation exercises, it really helps get a clean articulation if you've got good support. And support is related to all these things that I'm talking about. Still can't, I couldn't write a one sentence definition about it. You want to have that air ready to go. So when you release it, when you release your tongue from the reed, beautiful sound comes out. And that beautiful sound comes when you have a lot of air and it's pushed slightly. How? I mean, maybe you just have a lot of air and it's like, oh, coming out. Uh, it, you don't want your, you know, this happened and you don't want to, you know, it's not about that. That if you are blowing super hard, that's not a very cooperative reed strength that you have. I mean, there's a certain point when you're learning to play that your reed should be hard, that you need, it's a little bit uncomfortable as you're growing into this idea. But yeah, you know, it shouldn't stay that way. Like you don't, it doesn't just get harder and harder and harder. It should feel normal after a bit. If you go from a number three reed to a number four reed, it should don't take a little while to get used to it. And you'll have to work on your number four reads to get them to feel pretty good. But it shouldn't seem hard forever, right? It should seem normal at a certain point. And it certainly has to seem normal before you go even harder. I don't know why anybody... Well, I do know people that do play a harder than a four read. And they sound great. This particular person that I have in mind. But yeah. So anyway, if you're going from a two to a three, the three will feel uncomfortable for a while. But then it'll feel normal. And then from the three to the four, whatever, or half sizes, or however you do it, that's up to you. All right, so we got it. Those are some important or interesting ideas about air and the clarinet. This is going to help your tone. This is going to help your articulation. This is going to help your intervals. This is going to connect your registers more. This is going to do a lot of things. And for me, the whole thing is church yawn. Uh, and then it feels like that. And then you take a breath through your mouth that has the same feeling in your mouth and in your lungs and in your shoulders. So it's a nice relaxed breath. And then when we play it, we have that air inside us and it vibrates against this, which vibrates against this. And then we have our clarinet, which is 
outside of us and also includes the air inside of us. All right, that's all I got for today. I hope this had some level of interest or you can relate it to something that somebody's already told you about support. And I'm not even saying they're wrong. Uh, you know, yeah, fill the planet up with air if that visualization helps you. It's just not actually happening. We can think what we want to. And a lot of these thoughts are actually helpful to get to the results that we want. But to me, it's just a very interesting thought process to go through. And I wanted to share it with you today. Thanks for being here. If you haven't liked this, feel free to do so now. Subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you here next time.